folks, my next guest is a presidential historian and Pulitzer Prize winning author. Her latest work is the documentary series, Abraham Lincoln. Is there another choice? A third of our country is in rebellion because they don't like the laws we all agreed on. If we let this stand for one minute longer, we might as well say goodbye to the whole thing. Union, democracy, all of it. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Doris Kearns Goodwin. <laughs> Always a pleasure to have you on. How you been? Good. Lots of times we've been together. Yes, it has. A lot of times. <laughs> a lot of times. Listen, you have you've got this new project, Abraham Lincoln, which is so resonant to this moment. Here is a president who is um, risking uh, his political career, doing the right thing, trying to save a deeply polarized country. What what do you think history has to say to America in this moment? You know, I think we talk about democracy being at peril now, but we have to just understand what democracy means because we can fight for it. Democracy means the right to vote for your leaders. It's so simple, and that right to vote is under attack today. It's under attack every time we're trying to prevent people from voting. It's under attack when we don't accept an election that was fairly won. And this is the fight. I think we have to have the passion and discipline of the civil rights movement of the 60s, bring it right back now. It's what our whole generations have to be fighting for right now. That's what he was saying. Nothing else matters if you can't save the vote, right? Nothing else. One of the things about um, the Emancipation Proclamation is that my understanding is that he was getting a lot of pressure from uh, those around him, even his supporters, saying, don't do it now, because it was in 1863 and he was facing re-election. But he said, no, it is more important that I do this in, in the... In the uh, arc of history than my political career. There are so many politicians today that seem to be acting in cowardly ways. What, what lessons can they draw from Lincoln? You know, I still don't understand what it is. You've been in public life maybe all your life. Is it worth just winning another election and doing the wrong thing and not standing up for what history is going to regard? History is going to regard these people who are not doing the right thing now badly. Don't they care about how their children or their children's children are going to think about them? That's what I would hope for, and that's what Lincoln was always concerned with. How am I going to be remembered for having done something worthwhile to make people's lives better, to increase social justice? If you go through that route, you're going to be much better off in the afterlife as well as the life right now. Yeah, but and so often, the people talk about... <laughs> that's an important distinction you're making. You're making an important distinction about our... You know, when we say in the view of history, you mean your children and your children's children because, you know, we ordain and establish this Constitution for ourselves and our posterity, it says in the preamble. Hey. Because when we say in the view of history, you mean, what will your grandchildren think of you? What did you do to safeguard the blessings of democracy for the rest of us, or did you just look after your own career because there was power in it for you? Now, I know that you... You know that Lincoln has lessons for us, but in... If, if you could sit any president down with Joe Biden right now to give him some advice, because every president needs some advice, who would you pick to have a little uh, coffee with Joe? I, you can't ask me to pick just one of my guys. I mean, I'd feel guilty about the other guys. I'm sorry, so, I, can't, I have to ask you. Well, you, you can't ask me, but I don't okay, have to answer. The this right is way. true. This is okay. true. Okay. All I'm going to say is I'd bring Teddy Roosevelt back for the economy. I mean, he understood that the economy was shaken up at the turn of the 20th century by the Industrial Revolution, much as it's being shaken up today by the tech revolution and globalization. And he was that, a trust buster. And he, he knew that big companies that weren't playing fair by the game should be undone. He would know that you had to do something about people in the country who felt split off from people in the city. And he called for a square deal. This is what we need, a square deal for the rich and the poor, the capitalist and the wage worker. But then I would also want LBJ to come back. It's a time of civil rights. It's a time of Congress. He would keep those congressmen in the White House in a sleepover until they finally got a bill on voting rights through, and they wouldn't let them leave. <laughs> and, and, and then I'd have to have... 
Can I bring one more guy back? Sure, one more guy. And I'll bring FDR back because he could make people feel a sense of common purpose and common sacrifice against and his confidence would be projected. We have to feel good about ourselves before we can move forward. And then, of course, Abraham Lincoln. It's just who he is, not just what he did, that I'd love him to be around. So I'd love my four guys to be together. We'd all be better off. <laughs> well, but speaking of Lincoln, there, there, is, there is a question I have to, I have to ask uh -oh. you because you are the person who would be able to weigh in this with, with the most certitude, I think is that we, we talked about this uh, a couple years ago. Um, in the Los Angeles Federal Building, there's a statue of Abraham Lincoln, young Lincoln, and it was, it was put in there in 1939. And a couple of years ago, this got a lot of attention because um, people were surprised. They saw it for the first time in ways that I guess they hadn't before. Uh, this is the statue, and they were calling it uh, Hot Lincoln, I believe. <laughs> this is Lincoln. <laughs> With oh my belt, God! Without a shirt on and like one thumb right in the pants right there, is this an accurate depiction of how sexy Lincoln was <laughs> when he was a young man? Can I confess yes. that I've always thought Lincoln was sexy as a young man? <laughs> He's my guy. Look, let me tell. No, look. And there's no beard. I hate the beard. Hate, there's yes. a picture of him when he was rugged about two years before the beard grew. Yeah. And that's the guy I fell in love with. So I like this guy. No, and, and <laughs> There's a lot to like. There's a lot to like, Doris. <laughs> do you remember the time you had me carried out by four hunky Lincolns? I on do the remember that. Four <laughs> shirtless Lincolns carried you out on a litter. Exactly. See, that, that, what we have to think about Lincoln is he's a man. He's got a passion for politics, but he also has a passion for women, we've learned. One of the documentary oh, really? people, yes, Alan Guelso talks about that. He thought about women all the time. I like thinking about that. Wow. I like knowing that. How he did had... Mary Todd feel about that? Well, she she got him. She was he was he was hers. He was his. That's it. you know, you have other people around. No, he didn't do that. I I don't know about that. I'm not claiming that. No, no. No, but he Sounds also like you're getting Abe in trouble right I'm, now. I'm getting though. myself, I'm getting myself <laughs> in trouble. <laughs> But you know, he had a sense of humor. I mean, that you would have loved this guy. He, I can see him being me, sitting here with you, beard gone from him, and you have a bromance. I wow. Mean, he, he really can was. you imagine? Can you imagine the ratings we would get if we could book Lincoln? <laughs> but until I can, you're the next best thing, Doris. Thank <laughs> you so you much so for much. being here. Abraham Lincoln premieres Sunday on the History Channel. It's Doris Kearns Goodwin, everybody. Apologies.